Hi, Philip Blinsky with Practical Hap Keto. Uh, good friend and student John's gonna help me out with this one a little bit. Uh, this video is being made to answer a question in response to the last video I made, which is the four to one rule. Now you're gonna wanna go back and see that one because that'll explain the question and what I'm doing here now, the four to one rule, so look that up. But anyway, after I posted it, a person wrote, so, could blocking ever work if the attacker strikes first? Yes and no. In martial arts, you know, oftentimes we learn things that keep being taught over and over again, over hundreds of years or who knows how long, and we teach it that way because that's the way it's been taught, or that's the way we were taught. We don't ever hardly question anything. Not attacking. And I love this question because I'm trying to make my videos so it makes people think. I want you to question what you're doing. Question what I'm doing. Apply it. Put some pressure behind it. See if what I'm saying is true. So, not attacking any particular art or anything. I see um, outside, block be, uh, outside block being taught, for instance. And the outside block is taught that this, this circle see how it makes a circle. It comes down here. It comes up. Here comes the attack, and I block the attack out of the way. So if he's punching, this is my attack. So he's punching straight, and I'm going to move this arm over here, and then up here, and then across here to block his punch. Well, if you watch the 4 to 1 rule, you're going to look at that and go, sorry, that's BS. It's not going to happen. He's going to punch me in the face. The 4 to 1 rule says I can only move one-fourth the distance that he is, if I plan on meeting or beating his speed. Now, in the way that outside block is also being taught, depending on how he's teaching it, a chamber or a frame is taught with that. So oftentimes it looks like this. Both hands are moving. One, two. One, two. Now if I change that and make it look like this, and then do this, now our block starts to work. Where do our hands have to be if we're in? We're having words with somebody and we're having about to have a self-defense situation. Should your hands be in your pocket? Where should they be? They should already be up. So now that outside block is gonna work, but it's not gonna work in the sense that's traditionally being taught. Because my chamber or parry, that is my block. This part is now my strike or check or part of my parry. So for instance, my hands are up. First part, that punch comes in, boom, I can take care of this part. I've moved less than one-fourth the distance that he has. Then when this comes into play, I'm up here, and now I'm above the elbow. Okay, so now my block has some significance. Or I come in here, oh, here, and I take this through, and now I'm striking here. Right here in the temple, I take a knuckle and bash him right here. Trust me, man, I got something going on. So now I've just done this. I've just done what's called an outside block, but in a different context. This was the block, technically speaking. This was the strike to a target or a check. Where again, the check might be here. Oh, I've got this. Now I've, I've got some checking power going on here. I got this here. I got some lower stuff. I got some work I can do. Hopefully that makes sense. Now, if you look at this and all your other types of blocks that you may have, uh, well, like inside block is one of them too, um, where Although on an inside block, that'll potentially actually work if you have your hands up because all you're doing now is, is coming through and blocking that strike like that. Or if you keep feeding me a left, I, oh my God, here's my panic movement and now here's my inside block, right? Inside block, but now I'm going above the elbow and I'm hyperextending that elbow. I'm, I'm causing something, a good effect. So my, my point is, I challenge you to look at your blocks and techniques and apply the four to one rule to them because it's science, man. You know, again, don't take my word for it. Pressure test it yourself and see if what I'm saying is true or BS. You'll find it's true. Down block is another one that I find fascinating. Uh, I've seen different ways of chambering this down block here and here. Uh, I, look at, I look at down block as a, again, a parry strike combination. So if he's doing that, that punch is coming in, and I do this. Oh, he's body shotting me. I gotta change now. Okay, go here. Um, here's my parry, 
and here's my strike, right? So now I got, you know, different things in here. Um, this is for the down block part here. Uh, probably gonna do something maybe up here. I can come into the other side, same time. Here, strike here, and then the second one's gonna go across here. So it's there. Whether I'm up here doing this or down here or down here doing this, isn't it the same movement? Regardless of where I'm at on that plane? So anyway, so answering that question, will blocks ever work? Yes and no. As long as you're not moving more than one fourth the distance the attacker is moving during the attack. I love the question though. Uh, I love it when people are thinking and, and applying questions to what I'm saying or what you're even doing. And I encourage you to keep doing that. Question what you're doing, why you're doing something. Uh, all right, that's just pretty much it. Uh, I didn't miss anything today. No. All right, Phil Poplinski, Practical App Keto, Train Smart, Train Hard. Thank you.